David Swenson is smart, he thinks outside the box, and he is the, what I would consider the champion of modern portfolio theory. And I think he really does two things very, very well. The first thing he does is he has taken a forever outlook uh, on all of his investing style, and he looks at asset classes and the expected returns within those asset classes over 20, 40, 50 years. And when you're in an asset class long enough, you will achieve that expected return. So he's not in low performing or what I'll call uh, asset classes with low return expectations. He doesn't go, he doesn't have any cash, he doesn't go into bonds, and he actually trades. If you look at the bond return, he, instead of being in bonds that have the expected returns of 5%, he'll go into venture capital, which has an expected return north of 20%. And what he understands is that if he's in that asset class long enough, he will achieve that asset class return, and there's a huge opportunity cost for him going into bonds or cash sitting in that rather than being in these uh, asset classes that might be perceived a little bit risky but have much higher expected returns. And he has been able to outperform the market by substantial margin as a result of that. The second thing he's done, which is kind of logical and it makes sense, but every wealth manager will tell you not to panic, not to do anything, take emotion out. And he's found a, a very disciplined way to do that by adhering to asset allocation strategy. And prior to David coming along, endowments, pension funds, institutions, they used to have this 60-40 allocation to stocks and bonds, traditional portfolio, maybe some real estate layered in there. And they would find themselves, as the market grew, being over-allocated to equities and under-allocated to bonds because they would grow into that portfolio. And what asset allocation theory teaches you is that you want to set your allocations, and regardless of where the market goes, that you want to keep rebalancing. So as the stock market goes up and becomes a larger part of your portfolio, you're selling that and you're buying parts of the portfolio that are underperforming. So over time, those underperforming assets will come, become outperforming. And as we know, no tree grows to the sky, and eventually even the stock market stops performing. So he avoids a lot of those traps, those behavioral traps that investors get themselves in by adhering to a very disciplined strategy. So I would say those are two ways, the forever outlook and then adhering to a disciplined asset allocation strategy that keeps him going.